here we are in Bridge, and I just want to go over some of the things that we discussed in class this past week. That being said, I want to just give it a little bit of an overview of what Bridge is all about as far as the panels and the little sections are all here. And then what I'm going to do is describe them in detail. So over here we have a folder section where we can see our individual folders as that tree structure we're so familiar with. The tab to the left is our favorites. And if I was to click on any one of these tabs over here or folder icons, that will take me directly to that folder. So rather than having to always constantly drill through to find the folders that you always go to on a very regular basis, what I'm going to do is show you how to create a shortcut to your favorites so you don't have to drill through this tree structure all the time. In order to do that, I want to bring the images folder and put it into my favorites. Like I said, in order to do that, I have to go to the one level higher than where I am currently so I can actually see that folder in here. Now I see the folder is right there. I click on the favorites tab. I click on the images folder to select it and then I just drag it over here and I'm just going to make sure that I see that little yellow line and I release the mouse and now I have my images folder. If I was to click on that you would see exactly the same as what we see over here. So now I'm just going to scoot this up so we don't see too much of this other nonsense that's going on. And here is my folder structure. Now normally I have everything on a different drive, an external drive, and, but what I've done is I've gone and created this using some of the image folders, images and folders that we used in class. Now in class I had all of my Alaska images in one folder called Alaskan Images for Class or something like that. What I did was, I, before I started the tutorials, I created the folder structure to mimic what I have over on my external drive. On my external drive, I have a folder called Images. I do not put my photographs that I capture with my camera inside the Pictures folder down here. I do that, I don't put the stuff in there because there are other graphic applications that automatically default to this folder and if I want to go and make a backup then I don't want to be backing up all that other stuff that other applications automatically default to going into. So if you're familiar with iPhoto you'll know that iPhoto dumps everything in there and there's a the little bit of a uh, tracking mechanism or cataloging, if you will, that iPhoto photo uses and it's all inside there as part of, the, I guess, the library. I don't know. I don't use iPhoto. So what I've done is I've created a folder at that same level as my documents and my downloads and all that other stuff and I've called it Images. Now inside my Images folder I have three folders. This one here is my RAW folder and inside my RAW folder I have individual photo shoots. As an example here, I have, when I was on an Alaskan cruise, I created a separate folder for each day. So here we go, we can see them, and the folder structure is inside the RAW folder. The folder name starts with the word RAW. And then there's a hyphen, and then there is a four-digit sequence that I start off with. So obviously the first folder would have been 0001. So now for day one of the cruise, 0084. The second day of the cruise, 0085, and so on and so forth. And you can see that how I start this structure off is RAW hyphen the folder sequence number and then hyphen and then the year, the month, the day, hyphen a text descriptor. That's what I do. Do what you want. I'm just showing you so you understand when you see my stuff in in the tutorials or in the classroom, you'll understand where I'm coming from. Now I didn't make this up. All right? I've read a lot of books and I've taken this particular method from a very intelligent man by the name of Peter Croak. And he can be found on the internet by doing a search, but he is the famous author of a book called Damn. 
something along those lines anyways. And it just stands for digital asset management. The only one thing that I have done that's a little bit different from him is I've created this other folder here that has the, what do you call that guy there? The asterisk or something like that. And I held down the option key and hit the asterisk. It gives me a bullet. Bullet generally means that this folder is going to go to the top of the structure. If you take a look at this, if I took the bullet out, then this folder would probably go in between the DRV and the RAW. So I've set that up to be a little bit higher. Now this is the thought process. Import all the images from that I shoot in RAW. I import them into their specific RAW folders. Now, once I'm finished doing my stuff in RAW and I want to export them out to PSDs or TIFFs or JPEGs or whatever you have, then I would put them in their respective folders over here. So if I had something from the date of uh, June 16th, 2009 from that Alaskan cruise and I processed them out and made uh, web versions or stuff for printing or whatever it is, they would go in that folder and so on and so forth. So I can actually keep track of everything. And then when I want to go and back up, and the reason why I do this is I when I go to back up my raw files, I'm not backing up all of the derivatives. That's what this stands for, derivative. What is a derivative? It's a any image that is pixel-based that is generated from the original RAW file. It could be a JPEG, it could be a TIFF, it could be a PSD. It could be any number of file formats, but those are the most common ones that are used today. Okay, so this is where my RAW files live, and if I want to back that up, not a big deal. I'm, a, I'm only backing up just my raw files. When it comes to backing up the DRVs, these guys could have gigabytes of stuff in there, depending on what I've done with the images and how many I've actually processed. We all know that multi-layered PSD files occupy a lot more space than a raw file. All right. Now, you might be wondering what this is for, and these are my initials. So I'm trying to keep things in a common thing with the three letters. So I figured, what the hell, I'll just use my initials here and I'll put that little uh, bullet symbol at front so it goes to the top of the stack. Now, what is that for? That is for any projects that I start off by creating a brand new Photoshop document and then working on something. Rather than put them, uh, some of these bizarre projects inside here, the derivative might not have anything to do with it with any of these images maybe i'm just creating something like a screen capture or or, or a title image or i'm creating a um, collage a uh, banner an advertisement if i'm getting ready to do a promo for my courses that i'm doing online then i'm going to be starting from scratch and i'm going to import images from a variety of my folders to create this composite that i can actually use as an html email and fire that off so people are not just getting text but they're getting a visual in their email as well anyways what i'm getting at is i would put those guys over into here that's what this structure is all about. So now, if I came over to here and clicked on this, I would see all my folders inside here. Depending on what you have selected in here, you'll see different things down in the filter, collections, and export area, over here in the preview, and the metadata and keywords. So if I was to click on the first folder, not much showing up, it's just the folder. But if I were to come into that first folder and see these images, click on this guy, now we're starting to see a number of different things over here, over there, and everywhere else. So let's ignore, for the most part, the folder section. I think we understand that. We're going to start looking at some of this filtering stuff. So now when I have an image selected in the content area, over here in the far right column, we can see that we have the top row with our preview, and then the bottom row here shows us our metadata and our keywords. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my cursor on the divider and expand this out a little bit so I can get a larger preview. I can also scoot this down to get something a little bit larger and if I want this to go even larger. So now I've got a larger preview and this is really a neat way to go. So now all I have to do is hit my right arrow key and I can start knocking through these guys. All right, there we go. So now what I want to do is I want to show you that inside this particular folder we have no keywords associated with this. Wow, I guess we're going to have to do that and that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit later on. 
and exposure time values and all this kind of stuff. But what it is showing me is that amongst these seven images, I used three different lenses. I have one image that was shot with my 24 millimeter and that I'm going to probably assume that is this guy here. So the way we can find out is I click on that image and it shows me the one that was shot with the 24. If I uncheck that, I'll see everything back in this area. And if I say, well, which one of these was shot with my 50 millimeter? I'm thinking it might be this guy, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's come over here and click on it. Sure enough, it was. And then I have five images that were shot with my zoom lens. This was a beautiful lens, 80 to 200, 2.8. Wow, use that for probably 20 years. All right, and all of these images were shot with that lens. It's kind of, kind of obvious because here's the, eight, probably at the 80 and this one here at the 200, or maybe it was when we got closer, I forget now. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm getting at is we have a variety of ways that we can start to filter our images out and all that kind of stuff. So the next video, what I want to talk about is actually getting this stuff together so we can actually start doing some kind of a star rating and all that kind of thing. And it would have worked out better if I had all of these guys or if I'd actually taken uh, a dozen images or so from one of these specific days as opposed to having, you know, seven in there and three in this one and then one over here on that one, another eight over here and another one on that. But what I want to do is I want to get all of these guys into one container, so to speak. And in order to do that, I have to talk a little bit about collections. And we'll do that in the next movie.